Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's February 17th, 2018, and uh, recently I took a walk in the uh, in the second food forest, and uh, that was just a few days ago. And uh, we had a big thaw come through. We got up to 55 degrees Fahrenheit, so we lost a lot of snow. And oh, before I go any further, I mentioned an oak tree on the south side of the house in one of the other videos. That's the maple behind the oak, and that's the oak right there, and I just pruned it this summer and fall. Hopefully the wind isn't too bad. But anyways, today's video is about uh, the first permaculture principle, uh, observation and interaction. And one of the ways that I use this, it can be used, I'm sorry about the wind, it can be used in so many ways, uh, such a benefit. I'm gonna turn the camera out and show you how much snow is in the south side of the house. So this is, I'm on the south side of the house right now. Then we're gonna look at the entrance to, to, to our homestead, the north side afterwards. So let me turn the camera around. Okay, so right now I'm still standing. I'll show you orientation. Here's the house. Here's Sam. Here's the oak tree. The arbor, a uh, pergola rather, the maple, dog run area. Here's part of the, uh, the zone one gardens. And we're going out the access road. Now the, the driveways and the roads, I keep uh, the snow clear from during the uh, winter months. So, sorry about the wind, but the thing I want you to notice is the amount of snow that's still around. So you see all at the south side of the house, the snow is still here. And I don't know if you can see it, there's one of the weather stations over there. Sorry about the wind. It was much windier yesterday. We lost several more trees yesterday. And, uh, and I'll show you, I don't know if you can see it in the garden zone here. Right about there is another weather station. Now we're gonna go up to the north side of the house. So the drive access roads here, I keep snow blowed. And you've probably seen in some of the videos the size of the snow blowers, snow blower that I have. So we keep this whole area clean. Right over to here, going out to the compost pile, going in front of the workshop area, and over there to the, the chicken coop and pre future greenhouse. Now we're going up alongside of the garage. And something I want you to notice about here, and this is one of the places I dump the snow, right here. But you'll see the fence, everything transitions that's a six foot uh, cedar fence that I'm changing now. And uh, I'm changing that now and expanding the hugo culture beds around it. And I'll make another video about that. And I take the snow from the driveway in this whole parking area here in front of the house. And I blow it up onto the to this side of the property <laughs> and I blow it uh, mostly to the, that way is to the east and the winds come out of the west but look at the difference at how little snow there is accumulated up here now it's just a thousand feet apart and the reason for that is how everything's oriented here now I do get small drifts at each one of those trees those trees up there and at each one of these pillars along the driveway. But because of the way that the fence actually works with deviating the flow of, of snow and the high winds that we get here, that fence helps to mitigate the amount of snow accumulation. It distributes it evenly across here. It stops before it gets to here. I blow it over onto this side and the winds are strong enough that it catches in all of the swale systems. So we walked through the other day, you probably didn't realize just how deep these swale systems actually are. 
and we accumulate lots of this is where we accumulate a lot of the soil building materials all the leaves and all and that's one of the reasons why I use this as a soil uh, building system that I scoop out every few years so I just wanted to show the impact of properly placed obstacles that can help to control mitigate the high winds and uh, and also help to decrease the amount of energy fossil fuels we use in order to keep the snow from accumulating in the driveway. I don't have to snow blow nearly as often. My next door neighbor there doesn't have a fence on his side of his property and he has to be open all the time for as an auto shop. Uh, and my wife just has a little Camry hybrid that she drives out of here every day, but he's got a snow blow every single day that it snows and we do it about every four or five days that it snows. So it really saves us a lot of money and time removing snow. Just wanted to share that. So one of the points I just wanted to make sure that I made is that by regularly going out and observing, not just looking for problems, but actually being really open-minded when we're looking at situations and saying, you know, it's different here than it is there. What elements are, are potentially impacting, you know, the wind? And so having instruments like our weather stations, like that weather station right there beyond uh, there, and it's portable. I can move that to different locations on the property. Having instruments like that helps me to keep track of the difference in uh, rainfall, wind speeds and and the gusts of winds as well it's really helped me out a lot and the next best really the most important thing is going out there and looking and and increasing that childlike curiosity asking yourself why instead of assuming that we know all the answers to things it's constantly asking ourselves why so i just wanted to leave you with that little nugget and uh that's really helped me out an awful lot in the redesign of systems as I become more aware of what's going on. So if you like this, give us a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Share it with your friends and by all means, have a fantastic day. Bye-bye now, folks.